Looking at the title, you may be wondering, what in the world is an e-minister? Is it an electronic minister? Is it a computer who ministers? Or that ministers? No. In this case, the E stands for emergent ministers. And this message also applies to more seasoned ministers. Those who you've been laboring for the Lord, but you do not see the growth that you expected. Maybe in a sense you expected your name to be in lights right now, that you'd be on the preaching circuit, getting invited to go all over the place, and it's just not happening for you. And it's to the point where it's like you just feel like you just need to shut down your ministry and just walk away from everything. And not just shut it down, but for example, if you have like a social media ministry about deleting all the files, if you have books about pulling those books from the market, I mean just absolutely shutting it down. I've actually been there, but those feelings were actually coming from the enemy because what he was trying to do, he was trying to get me to shut this ministry down. And he's tried a lot of ways, a lot of times, and a part of that is through frustration, you get angry with the Lord and say, Lord, for example, if you're getting like a lot of spiritual warfare and your warfare is on a level that's disproportionately high in comparison to the fruits of your ministry. And you're thinking, well, the enemy is giving you these thoughts. Now, why do I keep on ministering from, for the Lord if he's not going to protect me? I mean, if I was a child of the ruler of my country, Sure, I'd have some kind of security assigned to me. And he just put all these things on you, the, the things that you think that, that are lacking in your life, the things that you think are lacking in your ministry. Thank you, Lord. A part of frustration also is that you're, you may minister to people and you may need finances and no one financially supports you. You may do things for people and you think they may tell others like putting a good word for you, similar to how Joseph with the cupbearer asked the cupbearer to put in a good word to the Pharaoh and the cupbearer just forgot about Joseph. So it's like you feel like you're in prison and someone had the key to set you free, but the person just forgot about you. And the thing the Lord just brought up to me a while ago is, Jesus, he healed 10 lepers, but only one even bothered returning to say thank you. Only one. And things like that in your ministry can be frustrating where you've helped so many people and it seems as if no one helps you in return. And the enemy tries to frustrate you and he tries to sell you the idea. And it sounds great because, I mean, it is true. You've done so much and seemingly so little show for it. One of the things about ministry is you will never know just how much you've touched people's lives, how much the Lord has used you until the day you're standing in front of Jesus and he can tell you exactly. There's some things you just won't see. You just have to keep on moving in faith. Scripture tells us the just shall live by his faith. So we have to live by faith. Every single person the Lord puts across our path, that we do what he wants us to do, and we just keep on moving. Because the enemy will frustrate you, and he will frustrate you with facts. And I posted a message recently. And to the gist of the message was about there's a difference between truth and a lie. And even a lie can be covered with a bunch of facts. So the facts seem, I mean, they're correct. Your ministry is not growing. People aren't supporting you. Well, you may feel like a failure. I'm not going to call you a failure. You may feel like a failure. So all those things are true. Or actually, all those things are factual. But it's not the whole truth. Because even being, able, even being able to help one person, that's a lot. I mean, if you can help one person, you're like a party planner for heaven. Because when one sinner repents, there's rejoicing in heaven. So if you can help one person, Jesus' ministry in John 6, he had many people who were following him. He did miracles. He fed people with fish and bread. And they still walked away from him. John 6 verse 66 he said that at that point in time because he gave such a hard teaching despite everything that he had done despite everything that he was and he still is the son of God they walked away from him and followed him no more 
Jesus did not get depressed. In fact, he turned to his disciples and said, um, do you want to leave also? But Peter said, no, you're the Christ. And basically, he's the bread of life. So at that point in time, it's like Jesus was down to 12 disciples. And he had a few more, but he was down to 12 disciples. Many more had walked away from him, but he keep on doing the things that he needed to do for the Father. Jesus later mentioned that unless a kernel of corn dies, it will not produce fruit. So in a sense, he was a kernel of corn that went into the ground. And he came up, he sprouted up. The people who initially believed him has been multiplying throughout generations. There are things that you have done in times past where it was a seed that was planted. You have not seen the fruit. You may not see the fruit right now, but do not give up. Because also one of the things is, we're told, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. The thing is, at some point in time, the enemy must flee. What he wants you to do is to shut your ministry down, delete all those files. And for example, the thing that's on the public domain, he just doesn't want you to, to delete those things. He wants you to delete the things off your computer so that you can't even upload them again. Because when you do that, it makes his work easier. Because he's actively trying to steer people away from your ministry. He is launching a slanderous campaign about you. And some of the things he's speaking about, I mean, they're facts. Those things happen, but they're now covered under the blood. So if you can delete those files that's out in the public domain, then it makes his job easier for the time comes when he has to flee. But if you keep those things out there, because even if you walk over from ministry, Elijah, for example, there was a point where he became seemingly depressed. He left his servant behind. He went out into, into the wilderness, and he wanted to die. But the thing is, even during that time, there were still, you can say, thousands of people who had witnessed what happened on Mount Carmel. That seed had been planted. He had defeated the prophets of Baal. So his reputation was already spreading. So him wanting, wanting to die, it didn't mean that his ministry had died. Elijah was taken up into heaven without dying. His ministry keeps on living on. We still talk about Elijah to this day. So if you feel the need to take a break, by all means, go on vacation, spend time with, spend time with your family, maybe get a family. But do not delete the things from your ministry. Let those things keep on being a thorn in the devil's flesh. Let him have to work hard to try to stop you. And the righteous man, you know you fall seven times, he gets back up. So whatever you do, keep on getting up. Do not allow the enemy to cause you to shut your ministry down. If you think about how people have fallen, David, he was in exile for a while. And not when he was in Saul's army, but he went in exile for a while when his son Absalom rebelled against him. And despite the things that he had done, the sinful things that he had done, the Lord reinstated him. So even if you've done something sinful, and the enemy is using that to say, you're no longer qualified for ministry. If the Lord wants you to redeem you from certain things, and redemption requires repentance. That just came to me, and I'll say it again. Redemption requires re repentance. Because David, he sinned. Nathan confronted him. He acknowledged his sins. But he wrote about and asked the Lord not to remove his Holy Spirit from him. David was repentant, and the Lord restored him. So yes, things may not have worked out how you thought they were going to work out. You may have seen other ministers come up after you, and now they have what you thought you were going to have. But do not give up. Stay focused on the Lord. I mean, if you need to walk away from things for a little while, but not walk away from the Lord, but if you need to walk away from things for a little while, if you have a social media ministry and you walk away from that for a little while, let those things keep on speaking. I know me, I've come across, for example, even videos on YouTube of people who have passed away many years ago. And I'll see those things and I'll listen to the messages and I'm like, wow. And even though those people aren't here anymore, the things that they did for the Lord still paying dividends to this day. So do not delete your works. Do not shut down your ministry. Let those things keep on speaking. The Lord can use them 
and he can still use you. But in the end, we call him Lord, and he is Master. But we also call God Abba Father. So it's not about our works. And you may have heard me um, speak about in 2016. The Lord sent me to Jamaica. And when he was sending me, one of the first things I asked was, Lord, what do you want me to do? And his answer was, it's what I want you to be. He did have me do some things. The most impo important thing you can do, the most important thing you can, you can be, is to be a son or daughter of the Most High God. I pray this refreshes you, helps to restore you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Be more than you do. Be more than you do. Be a son or a daughter of the Most High God. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.